Good evening and welcome to This Week in Joe's Basement. I'm Joe, and this is my basement. So, This Week in Joe's Basement, we're going to examine the life of a particular individual in great detail as a woman named Michelle Hoyer is going to tell us uh, a good part of her life story, uh, her, adoles her adolescent about her adolescent years, um, being a punk in England and running away from home and uh, living on the edge for a while. And uh, she doesn't quite bring us up to date, but part of what makes this story interesting is that Michelle is now a totally respectable housewife at the age of 21. She's been married for a year, she's got a kid, and she's living in Chicago. And she's adapting to normal American life. Uh, and all that's left from her years of living on the edge is this sort of wisdom that really only experience can bring. So uh, check it out. Uh, I think you'll find this interesting. Uh, as we let an interview go longer than you know is normally done on television. And uh, this show, when it first since it's first aired, has uh, engendered a fair amount of quite interesting response. I guess because Michelle is really beautiful and appears really fascinating in this show. Uh, that uh, she's got, well, in particular, there was this one person, Alex, uh, who wrote in this uh, ardent fan letter because he was just dying to meet this woman. And uh, he wrote in several times. And finally, I had to dissuade him and tell him that he really ought to just take a cold shower because, uh, unfortunately, Michelle really is interested in just leading a normal, sane, private life and uh, doesn't really want to have any sort of liaison with any of her fans. And we've covered that in previous shows. Uh, so, anyway... So, one person as she actually is, with a number of distractions along the way, because we like that, this week in Joe's Basement. Nobody listens to me anymore. You know that? Just the other day, I went to the store to get some cigarettes. I asked the guy behind the counter for a pack of Marlboros. He is this really slimy, creepy-looking guy with his shirt unbuttoned halfway down like it was attractive or something. I mean, this guy is a clerk at a convenience store. What does he think he's doing? He says to me, hey baby, we did cigarettes last week. Why don't you try something different? Something more original. Something more original? I'm ready to bite the guy's head off. But I figure it's been a hot day. Maybe I'm a little more short tempered than usual. So I say, look, I am not your baby. So why don't you just cool it, bub? I've had a lousy day, and I don't need any of this crap, okay? Just because you're some Weasley reprobate with hair growing up to your nostrils doesn't mean you can't sell me a pack of cigarettes. He looks surprised. Then he brightens a bit, and he says, Oh, I see what you mean. I thought you said candy bar. So finally, the guy reaches underneath the counter and hey, pulls out a box. Hey, 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 wait a minute. What? That's not what I said. What do you mean that's not what I said? I mean that's not what I said. I never said anything about a candy bar. No, he said I thought you meant candy bar. No, I remember I never asked for a candy bar. I, I know, but I said the guy behind the counter did. No, I never said that. I didn't. Look, I remember exactly what I said. Listen. Something more original? I might have bite the guy's head off, but I figure it's been a hot day. Maybe I'm a little more short-tempered than usual. So I say, look, I am not your baby, so why don't you just cool it, bub, okay? I've had a lousy day, and I don't need any of this crap. Just because you're so weasley reprobate with hair growing all the way up to your nostrils doesn't mean you can't sell me a candy bar. The guy looks surprised. Then he brightens a bit. 
And he says, Oh, I see what you mean. I thought you said cigarettes. So finally, the guy reaches under the counter and he pulls out see? this box of paper bags. I said candy bar. Well, I'll be damned. So I did. That's not what I meant. Yes, it is. I meant candy bar. No, it isn't. When I said candy bar, what I meant was I was searching for something better in life, for a new sense of purpose. I never said that. Well, that's what I meant. When I said that, I didn't mean anything by it. I just wanted a pack of cigarettes, okay? Just a pack of cigarettes. Excuse me. E excuse me? What? what? Um, that's not what I said. What do you mean, that's not what I said? See, I meant cigarettes. Mm -hmm. I know what I said. I just told you. The clerk said, I thought you meant candy no, bar. I remember what I said. What no, I, I said, look, no, I'm not, not your baby. baby. So why, why don't you just sell me a candy bar? Candy bar. No, no, I said candy bar. bar. No, I actually I didn't I said ask cigarettes. for a pack of no, cigarettes. I, I did not ask, I didn't ask for candy bar. No, I bars. asked for I cigarettes. No, I mean, I didn't ask for cigarettes. I asked for a candy bar. Or did I ask for cigarettes? No, I asked for cigarettes. No, I remember. I'm the one who said it. I said, for cigarettes. I want a pack of... No, I want a candy bar. You made me so confused. I did not ask for a pack of cigarettes. I want a candy bar. I said I wanted a candy bar. I didn't say anything about a candy bar. I asked for cigarettes. Yes, I wanted a candy bar. Stupid. I know what I said. I do. I know what I said. I asked for cigarettes. I think. Okay, I can tell you a story of when I was a teenager and I'd done the runner. I ran off from my home. Well, when I was, I think I was, yeah, it must have been about 12, 13. 13 years old. I didn't get on with my parents. And uh, I figured, uh, just see you later. I'm going to run away. I couldn't handle being, you know, stepfather pressure anymore. So off I went. And um, where, I had a, where did you live? OK, I lived in London in a town called Rumford. It's on the east end of London. It's just kind of on the outside, you know, around there, there somewhere anyway. and. Um, I was, thought I was real hip, you know, I used to go hang out with punks and stuff and, you know, our teenagers do. And anyway, I had this friend, Tony Barbaras, he was a punk, he used to have tattoos covered from head to toe with tattoos, right? And, uh, and he had a girlfriend, Julie, and we used to hang out together a lot, big time. And um, they said, okay, let's get a band together. We're going to France, Italy, Spain, Mallorca, Malta, and we're going to grab a person from each one, each part of the country, and get a band together. I'm like, yeah, this is really great, you know. So I decided to go. But, you know, the funny thing was I didn't have a passport. So I thought, what am I going to do? So my friend Julie, she um, was, OK, in England, there's a thing called if you'd lived with a man for more than six months, you're known as common law man and wife, OK? So she had... Um, a, a passport made up in his name, her name, but his name, you know what I mean, like Julie Barbaris. And um, I borrowed her birth certificate and I went to the post office and I got myself a passport. This was a one day passport, okay? And I went to France on a one day passport under a false name. We had the same, we had the same uh, birthday, we had the same, you know, address and everything. The only thing that was different was the last name. Okay, so we both was Julie, I was Julie O'Connor when she was Julie Barbaris, you know. So um, we went to France, so off we went. And um, we, uh, we, where did we go first? We went to a place called Montparnasse. See, I, was, I, I wasn't aware of where I was going and what was going on, I was just there, you know, I was just there with them, you know, I wasn't, and, uh, and um, um, I remember one place though was Montparnasse, and, uh, Somehow, I, I suppose it's because, you know, oh, we all shaved our heads, by the way. Well, actually, I didn't shave my head intentionally. Somebody did it for me without me knowing. They got me absolutely wasted, paralytic drunk the night before we were going. And my hair was pretty much the same as it was now than it, than it was then, you know. And um, I woke up in the morning and my head was hanging over the bathtub. And I was shaven. I didn't have any hair left, you know. And I was really, really mad. I was really mad. I mean, you could just tell I was really mad. I mean, I just went nuts. Well, anyway, 
uh, everything called Dan in. So we're in France now, and um, and they knew people out there I didn't know. And um, well, this is kind of a sad story, but you know it's kind of interesting. I think so anyway. And Tony Barbaras was an absolute dick. I mean, he was an arsehole. You know, he was the biggest prat around. You know, at least I thought anyway. And um, he used to beat up on his girlfriend, you know, and I used to watch this. I used to watch this quite often, and I couldn't really say anything because I knew I'd get my teeth knocked in, you know, <laughs> if I'd do anything or say anything, you know. And um, anyway, I just um, let it be, and um, he tried to get me on the game. You know, France is big for the prostitution, you know. And I was like, fuck you, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, see you later, I'm not doing this, you know. And um, they left me stranded in the middle of France. Absolutely, I was on my own. Didn't have nothing, just me, me and a few clothes, and that's it. So um, I made friends with this one girl, and um, she let me stay in her apartment. Like I don't know what they call them out there, just apartment anyway. And um, she, I stayed with her for like two weeks, and uh, met her parents and everything. And um, and then um, we fell out with a falling out. You know, we broke up and everything. And I was like, oh, drag. So I ended up squatting, and squatting in France is illegal. Okay, you know, when you live somewhere, you're not supposed to. Okay, well, I um, I lived where we. I lived in like there was this old old house, and it was burned down. Like half of the house was knocked down and everything. So it was like pretty much disaster. You know, so it was like open. You could see where the stairs were and everything. You know. And um, I, I stayed there. And then, um, oh, by this time, I'd made friends with other people, OK? Like, I'd gotten in with all the punk rockers and everything, and, you know. And um, they all, like, sh they showed me where this one place was. And I used to stay there. And other people used to crash there, too. And one morning, it was about 5.30 in the morning. And uh, we had this, out there, out there, like in French, you know? And I was like, oh, my god, what's happening now? And there were these cops. And I was really scared. And if you run from a cop, they shoot at you. They shoot, they shot down, they shoot down, they shoot down at your floor. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm scared, right? So I was going to make them run for it, but I didn't. And one of the cops shot their gun. And I was like, oh my God, oh. And I just got down on the floor real quickly, you know, spread, you know, just you like this, you know, out on the floor, face down. And um, so they rounded us all up and they put us in the back of the, in the, back of the uh, car, you know, in the truck thing police wagon, whatever. I can never remember how it begins. I need a few bars to play. Dum, 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 yeah. dum. took us down to the police station and the cops gave us and they, you know like searched us and everything for any drugs and that and, and my passport was ripped in two right <laughs> it was like completely demolished I mean where it had been screwed up and everything at that time and uh, and um, let me see and and um, they were like who are you and, you know they took my name and everything and and then after about nine hours being left in the in a cell you know they let us go and they let me go and uh, pretty much stayed out in France for like, well, I hung out, you know, made friends with people, bummed off the streets, bummed around, you know, and uh, pretty much lived that way and um, until I met this one guy and he was from Australia and he'd been in France for like six months, you know, studying France and French and all that and he wanted to go to see England. And because, you know, it's just across the water, so I figured, well, hmm, I'd like to go back to England, you know, to get things, see what's going on over there. And um, so, what did I do? Okay, so this guy said to me, well, I'll make a deal with you. If you go to England, I'll pay for your fare, only if you show me England. So I said, that sounds good. So we went down and we got on the ferry and we went into England, and there we are in England. Um, the only thing is they stopped me at, thing, at the uh, passport place because they wanted to know, you know, about my passport because it was like all ripped into. Well, I got away with that anyway. I was like, you've got to help me. I've got to get back to England. I mean, I'm English. You can't kick me out of my own country, you know. 
So anyway, here I am in England and I showed this one guy all around as much of England as I could. Didn't have any money or anything, so I was pretty much eating dog food and cat food or whatever I could get my hands on. Yeah, I ate that. It was, it was pretty much drag. I was squatting in England. And um, anyway, I was, I was down in London um, where all the punks hang out and there's a place called the King's Road. It's a main street in England where all the punks hang out and they're just dressed up and you know everyone, all the it's a tourist attraction where people go take pictures but you know the big thing is is if they take a picture you've got to like charge them you know because you can't just, in England it's the law that if somebody takes your picture and they don't ask your permission you can steal their film from their camera and you know it's not illegal or any, I mean it's, you know you can do that. So anyway, I pretty much said, you know, if people want to take my picture, I'd say, yeah, give me this much money, like 10 quid, like 10, 10 pounds, which is like 20 bucks a picture or something. So I lived like that for a little while. And, uh, and then uh, I met a friend of mine from my little town where I come from, which is Romford. And he's like, he wasn't sure if it was me or not. And I recognised him. And I went up to him and I'm saying, like, hi, how are you doing? And then he just slapped me in the head and he said, you're out of order, you know. And I'm like, what did, what's the matter with you, you know? What are you, what are you? And he's like, do you know what you're doing? He said, you're in the paper. I'm like, get away, I'm not in the paper. What are you talking about? Go, you know, don't give me this shit. And I said, you are. It was only a local paper, you know, like not a, the big new main newspaper, but um, it was a local paper. And, um, and I was. I was in the newspaper and I was pretty shocked when I found out. So I, I called, our parents went on the telephone, so I called a neighbour and I let my parents know that I was okay. And um, my mum was like freaked out, you know, because she didn't know if I was dead or alive or anything, you know. But by this time she was like, oh my God, oh my God, where are you going? You know, I wasn't living, I was put into a children's home when I was real young. So, and, uh, and then, um, Let's see, and then I and I'm like, okay, so I lived in London for a little while, for a little while longer, and then uh, I stayed there for well about two years, I guess, and then I went back to um, my little town in Romford, and uh, they put me with foster parents, and I stayed there for a while, and I met this one guy. Okay, this, uh, this was about a lo must be over two years ago now. We're down in Urbana and doing acid with some of Jonathan's buddies. And for some reason or another, we went out to play a little football. So in the middle of winter, these are the type of guys that would do acid and play football, okay? And the type of people you get down in Urbana. So one of the guys says, all right, says to another guy, I'll go out for a long one. And he grabs the football and just tosses it way out. And this guy just turns around and runs. And we give up on the game and we fool around a little bit. And we go back home to where it's warm, have a little bit to drink, smoke some grass and chill out. And about an hour later, the doorbell rings. We go to answer the door and here's this guy with the fucking football and he's covered in sweat. <laughs> what happened? He was, well, he used to go out for a long run. He, he like, ran all the way across town and back <laughs> carrying the fucking football. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And we, we'd totally spaced him out. We'd forgot. He lived in this house with these people and they'd forgotten about his very existence. <laughs> They're like, oh, so that's what ha that's why we stopped playing. You took the football. <laughs> Pretty bizarre. That's what that's what acid does to you. I'm telling you. Well, when did he caught the football and then he ran away? Yeah, uh huh. He ran away with it, and we we were just so fucked up that we spaced out the fact that he had run away with it. We stopped playing because we didn't have a football, and we didn't even remember why we had stopped playing. <laughs> We didn't even think to say, where's the football? Where are you going, Joe? Well, I was 16 by this time, and I met this one guy, and, um, you know, I thought I was crazy about him. I thought I was in love and all this, and we went off to Scotland and got married because he had all this money. He had eight grand. He got shot in the eye when he was 14 years old, so he had all this money, and it was really great, and we had a great time, and we did a bunch of stuff, you know. And, um... Some really weird things happened to me there, but um, I don't know whether to say anything or not because I don't know whether, whether I can say anything about this. Well, I can if I want. It's about drugs and stuff. Is that okay? That's totally cool. Okay, well, um, okay, we didn't, we, we were in Scotland and uh, we had a ton of money and believe it or not, we had all this money and we even slept it out in this basement thing in, for one night just because the banks were closed. Isn't that dumb? I mean, we could have gone to bed and breakfast and stayed there, but we didn't. So anyway, um, so we're, we're in Scotland. Okay, I'm in Scotland. I've married this guy and I'm in Scotland. I'm 16 years old, you know, and I think the world is great and everything, but it's not really because he turned out to be a right arsehole in the end. But anyway, so we didn't have anywhere to get any drugs, you know, smoking hash and getting real stoned and all that stuff. 
So we did the dumbest thing of all, which I did one time, and it was, it was kind of cool, but it's the stupidest thing of all, is to sniff glue, okay? Now there's this glue, what we use in England, is called Evo Stick, and it's this really strong glue, and I've had some really amazing hallucinations from this stuff. So this is like on our wedding night, okay? Sniffing glue, great, you know? So anyway, we sniff this glue, and then, anyway. But um, we, um, we went up to a place, you know, Edinburgh Castle, and, uh, and there's like, okay, Edinburgh Castle's like in the middle, and there's this, there's this like this path going around, and on the edge of this path, there's, there's, um, there were these fences. And we figured, right, where can we go sniff some glow? So we climbed, we found this little, oh, it was like a fence, and there was a ton of bushes and stuff all around. So um, we, we climbed this fence, and we sat down. And where we were, there was this, like, kind of on the other side, like around, there was this, like, brick wall. And there was this big spike about two feet in front of us sticking out the ground. Like, I don't know what it looked, it looked like some kind of stake or something like sticking out the ground. And um, we we're sitting there and we we're sniffing our glue, we we're sniffing our glue. And we could, and then this is really weird because I don't know why we both heard this, but we both heard voices, okay, saying, let me out, let me out. We're, like, we're talking to each other and, and they're saying, let me out, help us, you know, don't leave us in here, let us out, you know, all these voices. But we could both hear them, which is the really, you know, like when you hallucinate on glue, you don't usually both hear things at the same time. You usually go to do your own thing, you know? So um, we're, we're like, you know, I can hear this, you can hear this, what's going on, you know? And this stake was moving into the ground. We could see it moving into the ground. It was going down like this. And we're like, and, and by this time we were like, we've got to get out of here. I was scared, I didn't know what was going on, you know? I mean, girls get usually scared real easily, and I was. So I said, let's cruise, you know, let's get out of here. You know, I don't want to stay around here too long. So. Anyway, we got out, we went away, and we like we, we went back there the next day, you know, just to see, you know, if we can remember where we were and stuff. We were just like going over our tracks, you know. So we went back over there, and we we, we found this what the place where we were at, and um, we climbed the fence and we looked around, and the stake was still there, still the same size as it was before, still in the same place. But when we looked at the wall behind us, we were. At Sitting, we were actually leaning against these um, really, really ancient um, graveyards. Ooh, isn't that scary? I think that's pretty scary, especially when you're out of your own glue. And anyway, we went to um, Aberdeen. We met this one guy. Was he was uh, busking on the streets? And we met him and. We went up to Aberdeen and stayed with a bunch of friends there, and we did all this acid and just tripped out of our brains and stuff like that too, and that was good fun, and um, anyway, so anyway, the end of Scotland. We go back to where we live in our little town in Romford, and um, on the way back he's like, yeah, my mum said you can come live with me, you know, it's cool, we're married, you know. So when I get back there, <clears throat> she um, gives me so much shit, she just gives me all that shit, you know, you ran off with my son, you know, doing this, doing that. I'm like, what, you know, and I'm like, I love the guy, I love the guy, da 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 you know, because I really honestly thought I loved the guy, you know, just because, you know, you do, I mean, you just think you do at 16 years old and you think you're in love and all this, and, but you're not really, <laughs> but, um, and anyway, I lived, I lived there for a while and um, he, um, he's pretty much drugged out of his brain, he's, he never wanted to work, he called himself an anarchist, you know, but I, I don't know whether he was an anarchist or not because of the things. He, well, uh, he okay. He used to work very not a couple of days and then he didn't and then he did and then he didn't and then he wouldn't work at all for like six months and would just live off of what he had left and then um, and then well anyway he was a dick. I mean he was just an asshole and I just blew him off altogether really. We not. I am coined it. No crap. Sit down. Which one? Da la. Da. In gang. Should. Ah. Tied. Come. Should love. A hundred before three days. Use. To lick the jeep. Love so. To the empire. Slow. And here's. Praise them. Not gaze. For her. Eat. Thirty thousand. The rest. Eat. You disdain. Nor would I rate. At my. Get hurrying. Under all. Like dead ass.
find beauty found, nor in both of the queens and shall try that preserved fine and place, in my think. Oh, therefore, as you sit in like morning, and what shoal trends of every part and fire, let us spoil we may, and ravenous be rather, to our time devour the in his slow power. Let us roll our strength and all this up in tool, and pleasures with rough fruits of life. Though we may not stand still, shall make him. Was good. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Anton. Thank you. Well, here's the story what happened. We decided to go live in this rented house, okay? And um, we had, he was like, by this time, you know, scoring drugs and stuff, you know, he was like dealing it and stuff, you know, like hash, that's all, okay? Hash, nothing else, and a bit of acid now and again. And, um, and anyway, we had all this hash lying around, tons of it, da 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 da. da. And um, we're living in this um, house. We shared it with someone, but they were hardly ever there. And it was above a dry cleaning place. Okay, and a pub was next door, and there were these really ferocious dogs that used to try and bite off your ankles every time you used to go up the stairs. But anyway, um, we were there for a while, and we had this huge argument, this really big argument, and, you know, I guess everyone has their arguments, but, like, I mean, when people have arguments, you know, they don't say, well, fuck you, and then they pull everything down. This is what he did. He pulled everything down from the cupboards and everything, and he's put it in the middle of the room and he grabbed the marriage certificate and he put it on and he set it on fire and he locked the door. He locked the door in the room. We're in this small room and he locked the door. And I was like, fuck you. You know, I was really mad by this time. I ran over to the window. I was kicking him in all the, un, you know, obvious places that you can think of, you know. And, um, and um, so I'm like, shit, you know, what are you doing? And I'm like, so I'm kicking everything, you know, trying to get the fire going out, you know, and I'm like, ugh, you maniac, getting the covers and beating the covers like this. And um, I, I had a spare key, like, I, it was like sitting on the side, like sitting on like the dresser thing. And I'm like, I lift up the window, I'm saying, help! <laughs> and I chuck the key down, I chuck the front door key, and I'm like, help me, fire, help me! You know, and there's my ex, ex, or, you know, husband, like, fuck you, you know, swearing at me, what you think you're doing, and he's trying to grab me, and I'm like holding on with my arm out the window like this, and he's trying to pull me back, you know. And, um, and then I was up there for like five, ten minutes, and somebody come running up, running up the stairs and beating on the door like this. Like, you know, I open up the door, open up the door, and I'm like, you open up the door, you asshole, you know, and he's like, so in the end, he opened up the door, and I'm like, see you later, and I'll shut off. Why do I picked up a bunch of money and a bunch of drugs, and then I said, see you later, I'm going. So, and then I left, and then that was the end of that, and um, the end. <laughs> <laughs> you're learning, you're learning quickly.